Button debounce is a hot topic when it comes to integrating buttons into your system or project, and it can be found everywhere, from your fancy light-up keyboard to your mobile phone volume button. So today, we're going to test what it looks like to have no debounce, how to implement a hardware and firmware debounce, while also looking at the benefits and drawbacks of each method. But what is debounce? Well, we can demonstrate using two wires acting as the two contacts inside a button. As the contacts close and touch, there is a chance that they will bounce, creating another contact, potentially triggering the input microcontroller or a chip multiple times. Let's quickly hook up a button and a pull-up resistor to a microcontroller, where the microcontroller counts upwards for each button pressed. You can see how sometimes for a single press, the micro will count twice. This is because of the threshold where the microcontroller decides whether a certain voltage is either a one or a zero. So if the bounce of the button signal goes past that threshold after the initial press, it'll add to the counter. To remove this bouncing using hardware components, we'll take a look at the length of the bouncing, which seems to be a maximum of two to 300 microseconds. We just need to smooth out the signal over the 300 microseconds, reducing the high frequency bouncing, which is the perfect job for a capacitor. Into the previous circuit, we'll add our capacitor and another resistor, giving us the charging and discharging sections. You can see this also creates a low pass filter, which makes sense as our bouncing frequency is a high frequency and we're simply removing that frequency with a filter. To calculate the R and the C values, I took our bouncing to settling time we found earlier, about 300 microseconds, and chose a capacitor and resistor combination that created a time constant larger than our 300 microseconds. If we test this now, you can see that the capacitor smooths out our switching, eliminating any of the switch bouncing we saw before. Our only limits to this is once our circuit is built and soldered, it's hard to alter the debounce time unless we physically remove and resolder the values. So if we have a microcontroller, we can use firmware debouncing instead. To demonstrate this, we can connect our bouncy switch straight into our microcontroller, write some code to pass the signal straight through to another output, and you can see how the output is reading the bounces as an input signal. We just need to tell the microcontroller to wait for the button press and then wait 300 microseconds and read again, making sure it's still depressed, ignoring all the bouncing created from the switch. This method of firmware debounce is a bit restrictive as the delay will cause the microcontroller to go to sleep for that brief time and will not do anything else. We can optimize this by using some form of counter or interrupt so that our microcontroller can carry on operating while still ignoring the bouncing. So those are two debouncing techniques you can use. For best practices, make sure to include both debouncing techniques because if your firmware debounce can't be easily implemented, it's good to fall back on a nice, reliable hardware debounce. <laughs>